Greetings! What you see in front of the camera is remains of um, what I've been ripping apart uh, today. Um, so I've uh, had a bunch, a couple of uh, printers and a couple of scanners that um, had to be taken to to the skip or to the recycling center. But um, I wanted to remove some of the parts from inside before I get rid of the bulk of the uh, of the stuff. Um, and I was ripping the printers apart, and hence my uh, hands are all inky. Um, and then I got to the scanners, and uh, and I was ripping them apart, taking bits out. And uh, there was two Canon scanners. One was. Uh, uh, this came out of uh, the older one, I can't even tell you what model it was uh, but then then I had a uh, Canon uh, 5000F uh, scanner which was a little bit more uh, modern and uh, what, what intrigued me and what I thought uh, will warrant a video is is this actually so um what you see here this is this is the scanning module that goes uh on the rail and um in in this particular one there was a nice little stepper motor uh which is another good find in in junk like this and uh basically moves this along the side and uh there is a tiny uh, there's a sensor um which is like a, like a camera sensor somewhat, uh, but just scans one line and um, there is a light to light up the the, the paper uh, that's on on the on the flatbed, and that that's uh, that's about it. Now, when I opened the 5000F, this was inside. So this is the scanning uh, scanning assembly from one scanner. This is from the other scanner. So there is a, I suspect there is a reason, reasonable uh, enough amount of uh, trickery to warrant a video on this and take this apart further, uh, because yeah, because why not? And uh, this, I bet there's gonna be something uh, mildly interesting. Um, so yeah, I'll. I'll get on this um, in a moment. Now the 5000F scanner also uh, was also capable of um, scanning uh, slides uh, or 35 millimeter film uh, from a camera, uh, and this was the module uh, that was sitting in the lid uh, to basically light up uh, the negatives uh, through. And I pulled the whole thing out. Uh, I'll probably later on try to figure out what sort of um, voltages I need to give it uh, to to light up. Uh, this might make um, somewhat useful uh, backlight panel for something. Uh, but uh, for the time being, I'm keeping this as a whole. Now, the the older scanner was uh, was not even USB. It was the uh, printer. Port, uh, printer port device, and this is the board that was uh, that was driving it. And uh, yeah, there is a there is two massive chips which are most likely custom board ish uh, for this. Um, there is a this is where the stepper motor was connected, and there is here um, TD. Six two hundred six two double zero six two double zero three AP. Um, so I suspect this uh, this is some sort of uh, age bridge or a stepper motor driver because what have we got? Yeah, that's a five pin. So I suspect that's a, a unipolar um, stepper motor and. Uh, yeah, um, let's uh, let's actually have a look. What, what chip is it? Okay, um, so this uh, um, this chip, 
um, the TD6 to the ball 3A um, is a uh, what's called a Darlington sync driver and uh, it works on logic level uh, it's got seven channels in there um, so this is somewhat ideal to drive a, a unipolar stepper motor because you can just apply power to the motor and then using this you can uh, basically energize uh, each coils in a sequence as required so um, yeah this chip is uh, worth keeping uh, for further experimentation with uh, with steppers um, this is what uh, each each stage uh, looks like um, so basically 5 volt goes in and there's a Darlington stage to transistors and that will basically provide really low uh, on resistance uh, from output to ground uh, when uh, when energized so uh, yeah simple little little chip but uh, that will uh, that will drive a stepper motor nicely um, as far as this board there's two uh, 5 volt voltage regulators um, that's somewhat uh, useful to keep and there is uh, there are a few um, LS that's a uh, low power shot key uh, 74 series uh, logic chips I'm not sure which one those are uh, 125 and 245 um, I've tried looking those two up the big ones but um, the model number on them uh, on both of them begins with FH4 then dash 1347 and 6048 um, when I tried looking them up it only brings up uh, Chinese uh, suppliers and whatnot. Uh, this is uh, custom marking, uh, so this is probably Canon's um, internal part number and, uh, or whatnot. So this is uh, it's some sort of processor um, here, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's this board. Um, as far as the stepper, well, it's just a stepper. So yeah, that's worth keeping. And those uh, steel rods are always um, always handy. Okay, um, as far as uh, brains and electronics from the newer model, um, this was uh, this is the module, and it's all nicely um, shielded in a can. I just uh, just cut those solder joints over here. Um, but this uh, this whole thing was uh, pretty well uh, shielded from from outside world and elements and yeah I, there isn't anything on the back from what I see uh, but uh, there is there are two uh, exposed copper strips and those are soldered in into tabs so this whole thing sits in uh, in the in the shielding, um, but what we've got Mercury O3. So that's that's another uh, uh, custom chip, some memory, and LM317. So a voltage reg and. And the fuse, and and that's about it. So there isn't much in terms of electronics on here. Well, there is a lot, but uh, nothing useful um, for for just tinkering at home. There isn't an obvious um, stepper motor driver, but I suspect it might be here. Um, but yeah. Anyways, back to the original uh, thing that inspired me to make this video. So it is. Somewhat interesting how those uh, how those things work. There is a couple of uh, interesting components in here. So I'm going to now take this one apart. This is pretty much uh, box standard um, scanner module, and uh, then I'm going to take this one apart because you can see it's significantly larger, even though it's newer. So uh, the the, the trend with electronics is as they get mass-produced and um, as 
they um, the technology advances they, they get smaller now this came out of a much older scanner than this so this is relatively uh, more modern um, but it's yet so much more bigger so what I think this is uh, this will be interesting inside but before we do let's uh, let's have a look at the simple one and uh, let's see what uh, what is this made of so there is a lot of um, one-way clips there's a few things that have been glued oh, that came off um, so this is where the flex was uh, connecting and there is a strip of uh, what looks like brass on the back so let me see if I can okay uh, we've got a cannon uh, Oops, I broke the I broke the chip. The chip is actually on ceramic and yeah, I should have been more careful, but uh, anyways, this is just for uh, viewing. So not that, that important. There is a tiny chip on the side. It looks like some sort of photodiode. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll look at it uh, in a moment. Now, this is this has gone in one way, and there are uh, kind of clips, and this whole thing is really brittle. So I'm trying. To maybe pull it out there we go so it's a ceramic PCB and this is uh, the sen uh, the scanner sensor is encapsulated in soft looks like silicone but it's some sort of epoxy encapsulant um, obviously Obviously, because uh, for what it is, it's uh, entirely clear. Um, but uh, yeah, the whole whole board is uh, is ceramic. This is uh, interesting. I didn't expect a ceramic board in here, but yeah, there's. Uh, let's have a look on under a microscope on this. But moving on. So this this module where it sits, it looks uh, it will look through this black strip. Now this black strip is also interesting because it has a whole bunch of uh, holes. If I align it just right with the camera, if it focuses. Oh, I know. Hold on. There we go. So now you can see that strip. You can see through it. It's uh, it's got tiny, tiny holes that go uh, go through. And this is, this is where the sensor was sitting. And it's basically, the light is passing through those, uh, through the holes uh, onto the sensor. And that's how it's. Uh, picking up so I would think I might be wrong but uh, I think the amount of holes um, dictates the uh, vertical uh, resolution of the scanner in other direction it would be um, how many steps uh, there, are, there is uh, in in moving the whole whole sled across uh, across the a4 piece of paper but um, I think this is uh, this dictates the actual uh, resolution of the scanner across this bit the strip that we were just looking at is glued in there we go. 
go but the glue was nice enough to let go so yeah this is this is interesting let's try this it's not very bright but Yeah, you can somewhat see the holes shining through uh, for the strip. So yeah, uh, that's interesting. But I've seen that before. This is just uh, just the ordinary thing. And then uh, what we have is a light pipe. Uh, a light pipe that takes the light and diffuses the light into one long there we go so if I just uh, shine the light onto into one end you can see the whole the whole strip lights up quite evenly uh, distributes the light across uh, uh, across the sample so what I thought I've seen here as a photo sensor it's not this is actually an LED this has got to be the source of the light so this uh, there's got uh, gotta be an LED in there and actually looks like three separate chips so um, it'll be interesting to fire them up and see what uh, what they do one of them is significantly darker than the other two but it's def there's definitely three chips so uh, yeah maybe I'll look at it later basically that's uh, that's all there is to it with a sca um, ordinary scanner um, or scanner module it's quite simple so let's have a look at this one um, um, I can tell that this is, this is going to be a completely different um, construction so uh, let's get a screwdriver and take this apart Okay, here is a, on this board, there was two flex um, connected, one to here, one to here, and it was going through this uh, uh, ferrite um, to the connector, and they've gone into trouble to make this bracket, so the ferrite is at the angle they wanted and whatnot. Um, what's surprising here is, this is actually metal threaded um, inserts that go into this, Hold on, I've got to unplug the cable, so this is the motor. There's two more cables, we'll see later on what they are. And yeah, this is, uh, this is a lot different. So there's a beautiful ceramic package with um, with the image sensor on there, and this is uh, this is really sexy. I'm not sure, but yeah, I I can see. There is three different colors on there, so there is red, green and blue. Sorry for the shaky video, I'm freehanding this, but there is definitely uh, three separate lines visible for uh, for each color. So this is a totally different um, different shape than, than the one we saw in the previous scanner. And it looks looks much better quality certainly looks more expensive 
Okay, there is a L6219DS, which I think is another another kind of uh, stepper driver, just because where it's located. Um, yeah, some sort of motor controller. Um, I'll look up later. Right, okay, so let's uh, let's zoom in a little bit more. So here, this is where the sensor sits, and I think uh, the metal threaded inserts are purely for having to align this precisely, so they must have some sort of jig uh, at the factory, and um, they will align this precisely with... Uh, uh, with what's uh, uh, with the rest of the optics, but what I see here is the first thing that um, sensor can see is this gate window that this flap that uh, actually opens. So there is a there is a tiny actuator uh, that you can open this whole thing and why is that uh, I have no idea is this some sort of filter it does reflect the light in a funny way so this has to be some sort of filter um, maybe it's for the negative scanning possibly but uh, anyways on with unscrewing little bit of glue um, so yeah the f this section here is uh, just high voltage driver for the cold cathode tube that sits over here and uh, and here what we have is a lens okay that warrants the use of a laser so what I think I'll do uh, and that's having a laser pen uh, is quite useful uh, sometimes so I can shine this uh, laser through in here and see basically see what, what's happening yeah it can it can actually reach um, all the way to the end this whole flap assembly is being actuated by uh, a little electromagnetic this is bizarre so I've not I haven't seen before such a complicated uh, scanner assembly this must have been a really expensive bit of kit it certainly didn't look it just looked like an ordinary scanner but okay there we go so this is probably just about five volts or so and this will just uh, this is just an electromagnetic actuator which is kind of nice but it's got that funny color when you look at just the right angle there we go it kind of goes into reds so it might be infrared anyways let's take that lens assembly out this is just somewhat flexible piece of steel and we've got a lens a lens assembly so there's uh, I can see at least two lenses in there 
Okay, how do we get to the rest of this contraption? There's the, the tube and the reflector behind it. Uh, let's see. There's a nice caution um, label on the transformer. I have lots of volts. I'm sure it does. Anyways, we'll power it up in a moment. And yeah, so oh, there's a stamp on this glass, which is strange. Well, I think only small section over here was uh, was being used. So this here is a mirror. I think it's uh, certainly reflects stuff. Um. Okay, wow. So this is uh, significantly more complex than uh, than the other one. And when I just remove the clips, and I'll still hold it in place. When you look at look at this from the side. There's three separate pieces of glass. That's one, uh, the little thin one, and this is the, the third one here. Oh wow, this mirror is so sexy. Okay, so there's three absolutely amazing mirrors so what those are uh, check, normally you've got mirror on uh, on the back side of the glass but those um, have got the high gloss uh, finish on the um, on the outside so there is basically the the light reflects off of the surface where's my pen Oh, this is cool. Yeah, you can you can do all sorts of cool things with this, I guess. So, from optics point of view, this is a really nice, uh, really nice mirror. So, I'll definitely have a use for that uh, at some point. I'm still collecting some junk. There was a bit of this gunk on one side. Uh, this is probably just grease for the sled. Um, so, uh, what next? Yeah, you can see the the difference between a a cheapo scanner, uh, which was just using this um, type of um, sensor, and uh, presumably expensive scanner, which uh, has got this type of sensor and lots of optics which are not uh, this is not cheap this is not uh, this is this is expensive stuff and uh, yeah big difference um, in terms of build quality or construction and, and ways of uh, working and, and whatnot okay let's see if we can uh, power up the uh, the cold cathode tube in this mess um, so I'm just going to give her 5 volts to start with and see if she uh, see if she likes it and she likes it a little bit there's definitely not enough uh, not enough juice 
so I'm thinking 12 volt probably is uh, is way to go. Uh, but anyways, let's let's get the power supply going properly. Okay, so I've connected the uh, big power supply um, to the uh, to the compact fluorescent uh, driver board, and I'm gonna just uh, switch on the output now. So there we go. That's about uh, that's five volts, five point one six. So I'm going to increase the voltage slightly. Oh, that's a in, that's an interesting effect. So um, I me, mean, I don't want to get electrocuted, but you can see. Maybe you can't see. It's not that good on the camera. Let me switch off the lights. Oh, that's much better. So, as I... Uh, this is 3.8, so I'm gonna slowly increase the voltage and you can see that the tube very slowly... goes... Uh, lights up more and can go back and forward as I change the voltage. So. This is 6.55 volts, uh, 7, 7.3, and as it joins, it kind of clicks. So then I'll have to drop it quite a bit more. There we go. And again, play. So I guess this could be an interesting. You can make something interesting uh, using this effect. It might be somewhat unpredictable. You can... It kind of catches onto my finger. Um, yeah, but then as I go, this is seven, um, about seven point three volts, and as it goes up, eight, and it's brighter. Nine. 10, 11, 12 volts. I don't want to go any higher because I'll probably destroy it. Um, I'll switch off the power supply because it's quite noisy. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's working and this was interesting. So uh, yeah, that that has to be put aside. Let's have a look under under the skirt and see what's on here. So a similar type of uh, driver board to the other one. You can see the transformer in here. Uh, it's got those isolations. So this is one coil but um, they've basically got a separate uh, that's for high voltage isolation um, so you don't get too much of a voltage built up between uh, between the wires on the and I am not sure the whole thing is uh, there isn't any clever electronics on here it's all passive uh, two transistors and that's about it um so okay so uh yeah i've got this going as well so i figured out what was wrong so it starts working at uh, just under 8 volts and i think it 12 volts is where it should be working Anyways, um, curious uh, to see what sort of voltage uh, goes onto the cold cathode tube. So let's let's check that out. There we go. Power on. So 
Let's give it full walk. Let's give it 13 volts. Oh, the meter is going funny. Okay, this is uh, this is making the meter go completely stupid. So this is um, high voltage and it's at a very high frequency. Um, so that's 50, 53, 54 kilohertz. And even when I keep the probes anywhere near it, it will it makes all sorts of silly things happen. Okay, let's try to measure it uh, open circuit. Maybe, maybe that's going to be uh, more successful. So back again. Let me get the range. Get rid of that silly auto ranging. Okay, that's alive. And whoa. Now, I can see, how can I make this visible on the camera? Okay, now you should see it somewhat better. So, when I'm trying to measure it... I need to put the output on. Okay, there we go, that's live. producing a, an arc discharge so charging by the length then there must be at least a few kV on here obviously this is really really small power I could make a miniature Jacob's ladder out of it maybe okay there we go why not because we can um, here is probably the world's smallest uh, Jacob's ladder, uh, made out of uh, uh, the cold cathode tube drive. Oh, shut up. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this uh, I've just literally took two pieces of the copper wire and uh, connected this uh, to the output. I'm driving the the cold cattle driver at uh, 12 volts and it's drawing uh, roughly about 25 uh, sorry 250 milliamps now funny enough, as I increase the voltage so I can drive it now it's at 18 volts 20 23 25 and not much happens uh, it's drawing 400 milliamps now so I don't want to cook it, so I'll, I'll just back down a little bit. It started wa walking up the ladder really nicely now. I couldn't get it going at first, uh, it was just uh, very static, but now it seems it seems to have uh, started walking up and down the ladder as it should. So 
That's nice, that's my first Jacob's Ladder. Impromptu. It has discolored the copper wire. You can see the uh, where it's um, it's not uh, soldering. Uh, it's purely from the uh, from the plasma from the discharge. Uh, it's uh, the copper has discolored and, and uh, yeah, it generates some some heat. Um, but yeah, there we go. Uh, beautiful Jacob's ladder. Uh, what am I going to do next? Here is another close-up. Uh, I couldn't resist. Uh, I've been playing around with this for a while now. And... And yeah, it's rather... rather pretty. You can see the copper has gone uh, all red on one side. Sorry for the shakiness. Yeah, so one uh, one piece of copper is uh, red hot, and this is generating quite a bit of heat. I can I can feel the heat from about 20 centimeters away. Oh, I just lost the heat. This is getting better. This is drawing uh, at 20 volts. Uh, this is drawing 700 milliamps now. So uh, yeah, this is uh, consuming quite a bit of quite a bit of power. Okay, check this out. How how hot this is. So I've got uh, a piece of solder that I'm just going to put above it. So this plasma is, is extremely hot. And this is more fun that I'm, I'm having more fun than I've ever had uh, with a scanner before definitely probably need to shoot another video um, with uh, taking this and and this uh, sensor uh, under the microscope on the uh, CNC table and uh, and see um, see if it looks beautiful um, I'm I was thinking maybe I should uh, put the Jacob's ladder or the actual plasma thing under the microscope but I'm worried because it does get really hot and the microscope has to be really really close to it so um, I would have probably damaged the microscope um, so maybe maybe I'll pass on that um, but I think for as far as this video uh, I think that's it oh I just had a wild idea. You know that little module that uh, powers up the uh, cold cathode tube, uh, the one I, I just put the cover back on. How evil would that be uh, to fit that in inside a USB charger plug and leave it in the office and wait for someone to uh, plug their iPhone into it oh dear but I'm not gonna do that that would be so evil anyways take care